following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to a uh, scene in Dallas. Hi, Tom. I love your show. Uh, Thank you so much. I've been much. listening to you since 2001 from my Seattle days when you were on a little station there. I appreciate you growling and prowling with us out there, man. <laughs> Thank you. Well, listen, thanks for bringing us from Seattle to Dallas, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah I love uh, all the hosts. I love your show. I'm addicted to it. It's Hotel California. It's wicked, isn't it, man? <laughs> thanks. Right, Tom, nice okay, to man. To you. Have a great one. Right. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Love has no expectations or obligations. When you love, whatever you do, you do it because you want to. It becomes a pleasure, it's like a game, and you have fun with it. When you love, you don't expect something to happen. Whatever happens is okay, and hardly anything disappoints you. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 111, NASDAQ up 41, S&P's up 13, gold contract up $9.90, trading at 1,341 an ounce. Silver up 21 cents at $19.98 an ounce. Copper up three and a half pennies at 219 a pound. Light sweet crude. Up 92 cents, 46 dollars, 26 cents a barrel. Bonds. We have the 10-year note up eight ticks, 130.27. 30-year bond up 31 ticks, 167.18. King dollar. King dollar down 295 ticks, 95.37. King dollar has rejected lower price once again, folks. King dollar wants higher price, and that's going to throw a wrench into the market once again. Volatility. You can expect it to stay here and pick up. Euro, euro is at $1.12, and the yen is trading at 100.86. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Okay, so the SPY is up $1.41. You're at $217.23. You've done 52 million shares, so we'll do about 62 million. You're into the gap from the gap down on the uh, 9th of September. Uh, bottom line is if you get uh, if we get a close under 21703 folks you get a failure on price and volume there's no volume at all there's no buyers up here that's the bottom line zero buyers 53 million um, the Qs NDX 100 now the Qs and the composite are over the highs uh, you had 17 million shares bottom line until they get back underneath the highs they're over them the highs that we're talking about are 118 dollars and uh, 12 cents uh, right now 17 million shares. Uh, we'll see. I expect this is going to stay up there today. We'll see about tomorrow morning. The composite. What do you have with the composite? Same type of setup in the composite. The composite gap tire today up 41 bucks. Has been as high as 53.41. Right now you're at 53.36. That's over the highs also. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Gold contract out here, folks, is trading at a price point of $1,341. We've got the $1,347. And it looks to me like it's pretty, it's a mind blower, but this is going to be a replay of uh, last week, uh, not last week, on the uh, 9th of September. So 9th of September and I believe the 8th, or is that the, or the 2nd, or the 2nd and the 6th. So September 2nd and September 6th, gold move wide price spread and volume. What it didn't do, however, is get to a swing point. And that's swing points are where markets talk, walk, and squawk. Then what does gold do? Gold gives it up. Yesterday, gold also moves with volume, moves with wide price spread. Had lighter, lighter volume than the last time it moved. We had 260 million share contracts traded versus uh, 283 versus when it gave it up the first time at 300. That level there, the first one, uh, that level uh, coming up to this uh, 
1350 is where that seller is, and there's a large seller, folks. The seller started uh, right from the highs, uh, going back to July 12th. Bottom line is that now you get over it, you're under this uh, level right now, and you know we'll see where this baby wants to go. When you do look at the XAU and the HUI, uh, it was a gold equities that would actually um, uh, put in some selling pressure inside the S&P, which is just a mind blower. But the, the, the only thing that was starting down this morning were actually the gold equities. We had the XAU uh, go from $101 uh, to 98. We had the HUI uh, go from a price point of uh, $249 down to 240 So bottom line, in both cases, I suspect when I get the volume out here tonight, we're going to have a failure on price, failure on volume, which is really unusual. Uh, not that unusual, though, when I'll, I'll jump right now to the U.S. dollar. And what you're going to see, the dollar, once again, wants higher price. Um, the dollar rejected lower price out here, did it with light volume, and we did that with light volume without getting to a swing point once again, meaning a lower swing. So what you have is this. You came down today with 23,000 contracts. You're at $95.37. Yesterday we got to a high and we broke the high, lower swing, uh, the higher swing at ninety-six dollars and thirty cents. That's saying you're going right back topside, and I expect coming into a Friday we're going to get it tomorrow. Let's go over, over to the notes first. We take a look at the ten-year note. What you have with the ten-year note? Ten-year note today is up ten ticks. We're trading at a price point of one hundred and thirty twenty-eight. And that little baby's coming into uh, like 1.2 million contracts, and thus far you've only done 954,000. Um, so bottom line is that the notes and the bonds are going to need a lot more volume. The, the bonds um, look to me like a very large ABC structure on the way down. Uh, the bonds uh, have done uh, 222,000 contracts out here. That is going against uh, 333,000. You know, so. Uh, this, this is a big number. This is a big number, and what it's saying is that regardless of what the Fed, Federal Reserve wants to do, uh, what the notes and the bonds are saying is that they're saying that they want to go up on price uh, regardless of what the Federal Reserve is going to do. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Let's go to the silver market, and we take a look at silver. Silver had a huge move yesterday, uh, SIZ6. So silver out here got to a price point today of twenty dollars and fourteen cents. We've done sixty-six thousand contracts, which is which is good. But bottom line, uh, right now uh, silver is, uh, silver would have to come down about another four pennies to have a failure. Uh, the, the swing point that silver was, was trying is trying to go after is twenty dollars and uh, twenty-three cents. Oil. Let's go to the, take a look at the oil market. What we have with the oil market. Oil market out here today up 91 cents. You're trading at $46.27. And the oil market also is dying on the vine, meaning um, this it looks to me like a counter trend bounce at this particular point. We've been kind of in the, the range between the uh, 50 mark and the 43 mark for approximately a month now. Uh, it looks to me like, uh, bottom line, it's not going to make it up to the swing point that we're, the last swing point out here, which is uh, $48. This is Tom O'Brien, this is TFNN. Stay right there, folks, we're coming right back. Dow Industrials are up 105, you get the NASDAQ up 42. S&Ps are up 13, we're gonna be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 104. You get the NASDAQ up 42. S&Ps are up 13. As we do each and every Thursday, we have our man, Mr. Andy Heck. Don't forget, folks, right here at TFNN, every trading day on, well, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have live programming from 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. Tuesday, Thursday, 7 o'clock in the morning to 6 in the afternoon. We take all that programming. We replay it all night long. You can get all this programming right on your cell phone. If you happen to be listening to your car radio right now, always remember you can go to tfnn.com in your browser on your cell. Hit Tiger TV on the right-hand side. You're going to get some great HD video as well as audio. Our man, Mr. Andy Heck, has a great show every Tuesday, Thursday, 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter. The newsletter is called the Technomento Commodity Report. You can test drive that by coming over to our website at TFNN. You had newsletters, trading newsletters, test drive it 30 days, absolutely free. Andy Heck, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I'm doing great. Um, very interesting. So, so let's talk a little bit about the Fed for a minute. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, listen, we went into this meeting yesterday. We spoke on Tuesday. I think everyone agreed that the Fed wasn't going to do anything. Yes. But it's very interesting because the markets have reacted in such a way that, you know, it tells me the following. It says the Fed hasn't done anything, but the Fed should have done something. Because yesterday, after the Fed meeting, and today you've had follow through, you had key reversals uh, on the daily charts in gold, in silver, in stocks, in the 30-year bond, in the dollar, yep. and, you know, a lot of interest-sensitive commodities. It's heavy. Uh, listen, you know, it's going to be intriguing to see how this shakes out tomorrow, folks, uh, you know, so. Going to be going to be very interesting. And, you know, I heard what you were saying about gold and silver and, and oil. They've all, they're all, like, sitting at their midpoints of their ranges. Gold, well, 1385 know, to 1305. Silver, 1846 to 21 and a quarter. They're all sitting just in the middle of the ranges. They don't know what to do. Well, what has happened is that in the metals market, folks, the, the actual metal has held up pretty good anyway, you know, just through this whole correction. Yes. But the equities have not. The gold and right. silver equities no, I, are down big. You know, and, interesting. And, and what happened this morning, Tommy and I are doing the show at 10 o'clock this morning, and, you know, I'm looking at, over at the den, and, and one of the people in the den are looking at AG. And I know, you know, uh, First Majestic really well. And First Majestic was giving it up at 9.30 this morning. I'm saying to myself, man, that means the sellers are still out there. And sure enough, 
and the gold market and the silver market, folks, uh, they, it's still it's it's a problem, you know. So right, right. So so the interesting thing is that you know with all that hawkish talk at the end of August and in early September, what you had was you had a lot of departures from from gold. The the ETPs, the exchange traded products, the amount of bullion held by them right. went down. Right. Uh, you had open interest in gold fall from 600,000 contracts down to, I don't know, before the meeting, let me just take a look here, it was, it was below, you know, uh, uh, 560. Okay. So you had a lot of positions taken off, and you had these things fall into oversold territory. So the corrections don't make, make some sense, but where we go from here is, is questionable. Uh, I, I just think, you know, strap on your seatbelts. Uh, yeah, this oh, is, there's no doubt, man. This is going to be very volatile. And Monday night, you got um, you got uh, Clinton and Trump going at it. Uh, Best entertainment the, around, no you doubt. You got the election, you got OPEC meeting in Algeria next week and the oil market. You got a lot of things that are going to cause a lot of volatility. But the election is going to predominate. And... Um, you know, we're going to see things all over the place. One interesting market that I just want to bring to, to mind here, something we very rarely talk about, is lumber. Uh, the lumber, the price of lumber headed down. Last year at this time, the price of lumber was about $220 per thousand board feet. Okay. Right now, it's 325 uh, you know, what the Fed did yesterday really goosed lumber. And very interesting, today Goldman Sachs came out and they put a buy recommendation on uh, Weyhauser, yeah. uh, W-Y, okay. uh, which is a, a real estate investment tr sure. trust that owns a lot of timber. Right. And, you know, look, new home construction has been uh, uh, very steady. Because yep. interest rates are very low, and the Fed basically just gave a bullish injection to the lumber market here. Oh, you're gonna crack up. So, you know, you know, we get the the, the fund. I'm trying to buy a, a trailer load of lumber out of, out of Canada right now. It's so funny. Don't be tall. You're gonna be, <laughs> if you haven't priced it yet, you're gonna be paying a lot more. No, Limit well, up today. I, I, it, what happens? I'm paying a lot less than buying it at any store, uh, yes, even any wholesaler. Course. But you know, but I'm, well, I'm with you, right? So you should just buy the futures and take delivery. Yeah, and it's a certain it's a certain type of wood I'm looking for, though. Uh, although yeah. I know, yeah. and yeah, and you yeah. probably don't need as much as a lumber uh, uh, yeah. contract. That's for yeah. sure. Um, but uh, you know, look, so lumber got a, a, a nice injection today. Uh, natural gas broke out to the upside, but it's coming down today. Uh, very interesting over there. We had an injection of 52 BCF into inventories. The market was expecting less, but the market is wrong here, and let me explain to you why. 52 BCF into, uh, um, into inventories right now is a low number. Last year, during this week, the injection was 105 BCF. We're 45% behind last year's pace. I still think uh, natural gas is a, a buy on a scale down basis. We broke through the 30220. Uh, I still think it looks uh, uh, well, very interesting to the upside here. In, in that context, uh, what is going? You know, when we were reading this this morning, it, it, the, the build might have been smaller, but the amount of storage is much larger already than last year. Well, the, the, we're, we, we were actually at 50 percent above last year's inventories in storage. Yeah. As of today, so, we're only four percent above. I see. I see what so you're saying. Okay, cool. I got it. Above, I got it. I know when I was reading that, I, I got it. Okay. So last, uh, last, year, last year that it, it was last year. So we're above last year's number, except last year's number was so much above the year before prior's number, right? Well, well, not just that. What, what happened was we, because of the warm winter and because of a lot of gas coming into inventory uh, uh, last year, you know, we went to over 4 trillion cubic feet. And what, what's happened is, back in the spring and in the summer, we were at 50% above last year's storage number. Okay. In other words, we had 50% more this year than we had the year before. Now, that number's come down to only 4 point, I think it's 4.1%. I like, see. Okay. 4.1%. Uh, 4 yeah, that was the number uh, above. 
And you know, that's that, the trend, the, the trend. The bottom line, natural gas is trickling into storage rather than flowing in. Yeah, right. So that's the bottom line there. Now, another interesting commodity today, uh, a lot to cover today, was sugar. Uh, I've been talking about the 50% retracement of the move from 36 cents down yes. to 11, 10.13 uh, cents. That was at 23.1 cents. We traded above that. We traded to 23.88 today. Look at that move and then gave it up. Wow. Well, we gave it up, but that makes sense because we went up to a key technical level, blew through it, and then profit taking took it back down. We did That's the same thing today in coffee. Coffee got up to $1.60 and gave it up on profit taking. Wow. So these are very interesting markets now. Yeah. Lots of volatility. Stay, stay right there. Oh, I can't wait to hear your show this afternoon, man. Amazing. Uh, uh, you stay right there, folks. Andy and I are coming right back. Dow Industrials right now up 105. You get the NASDAQ up 43. S&Ps are up 13. We're going to be right back, folks. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Focus Commodity CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to six equally weighted commodities, including gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 50% per component, you could earn up to a 50% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The October 13th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, right now, we have the Dow Industrials up 107. We get NASDAQ up 43. S&Ps are up 13. We're talking with our man, Mr. Andy Heck. We're talking commodities. Uh, but I'm going to switch gears on him right now because I can see that he was in the den saying that he wrote a very controversial article uh, yesterday. Oh, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a lot of abuse. I want to hear about it. Tell, tell yeah, us, yeah, yeah, tell yeah, us yeah. what you're doing. All right. So I wrote this article for Seeking Alpha because I watched these hearings. I watched, you know, Senator Elizabeth Warren lambasting uh, Stump. stump from uh, Wells Fargo okay. at the, in the Senate. Yeah. And 
I, you know, it says, I said to myself, I said, you know, this is the, the wrong Warren is attacking him. It, it should be Warren Buffett, who's the largest shareholder. Right. And, and he decided actually, to keep his mouth shut. Yeah. He's been Which very a, silent, very yeah. silent. But, you know, I, I, I thought Elizabeth Warren was grandstanding. And I thought that she hey, was, the, senator, for sure. the senators should have, you know, they use it as a political soapbox. They do. They should have, they should have called up Warren Buffett and say, hey, Mr. Shareholder, get in there and clean up this mess. Right. Right. You know, right. so so one of the things I wrote in there is, hey, you really want to punish Wells Fargo? Close them down. People right. went crazy at me. Really? I said, close them down. And 265,000 jobs. It was kind of a metaphor. You know, it's like the punishment is is for 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 CEOs and for senior managers who actually who either do wrong directly or who 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 can't supervise the organizations. Are, are are ridiculous. Let, let's look at Angelo Mazzillo. Let's look at Jimmy Kane from Bear Stearns. Let's look at this guy Stump. Let's look at the woman who was in charge of all the consumer banking who got, she got a nine-figure retirement package. I know, 26, 25 mil, right? Right. At right. 56 years old, and she's retired. Okay. You know, yeah. You know, I, I, what, what, this is, my point was, hey, shut them down. You want to really get something going here? You want to make people fear? Take their money away and shut them down. People went you wild. You got to put them in jail. And, you know, the, the bottom line is that, folks, this is going to go on forever if no one goes to jail. Okay? Right. Money is not a deal because all the executives are insured, number one. Right, no right, one right. goes to jail. It's, you know, the, so you, me, you, know, you know what's amazing? Is that what was the, there was a bank robber in uh, the 1930s or something that says, you know what, it, the pen is the best deal. So nothing has changed since the 1900s, folks. And I hope at some point something will change. But yes. if, and, if and, someone and, doesn't go to jail, everyone, every banker will do it. because Just to take it one step further, what I said in the article is that, you know, the, because of Dodd-Frank, and what they're going to do is they'll slap more regulations on. And, and actually, the regulations have protected management. Why? Because they have airtight employment contracts. And when they do get in trouble, the organization has to pay for their lawyers. And I know. They come, and, and the Justice Department doesn't want to prosecute these cases because they're coming up against the best lawyers in the country. Right. They'll go before a jury. They'll put reasonable doubt in the mind of the jury. They get no convictions. Right. So right. why would you want to prosecute if you're a Justice Department official if you know you're going to lose the case over and over again? So this is the problem. This is, and when I said shut them down, it was like, a, you know, hey, we got to do something. That, that stops the bad behavior. The, you know? the, the, the problem that I see is that I really thought after the 2008 debacle that someone actually would go to the can because we're talking about billions and like no one went to the can. So it's like, you're going to be kidding me, man. You know, so. Well, you know, the Bear Stearns guys got off. The, the head of Bear Stearns walked. The head of Lehman walked uh, uh, without any, any problems. And now they're going after, they're going after, you see, they're going after Leon Cooperman. Yeah. For yeah. insider trading. They're going to go after him for $4 million. And like the, right. who's the first guy countrywide you're talking about? The, Angelo Mazzillo. Yeah, the guy with the big tan. That, that, guy, that guy, folks, almost took down Bank of America when, when the Fed had Bank of America buy countrywide. It was like, you're going to be kidding me, man. Right. Oh, so they took, but they took down, remember, they took down Arthur Anderson. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. They took down Arthur Anderson, but Arthur Anderson was a consulting firm. They weren't a financial institution. Right. They are too big to fail. Right. So the answer, the answer was instead of Elizabeth Warren getting up there and excoriating him in front of the Senate and on yeah, TV, yeah. where she has a giant platform to, to say what she says, think whatever you want of her, but, you know, she grandstanded. The, the answer there is get a group of senators, go into a conference room, get Warren Buffett on Omaha on the phone and say, hey, hey, buddy, you know? Right. Uh, we can make your life very difficult. You clean up this mess now. You get this board out. You replace it. You get this CEO out. You get all responsible parties out and report back to us. You have one week. That's how it should have been handled. But it was handled very badly. Because, by the way, everything that they said in that Senate hearing would prejudice any jury trial against him. Yeah.
Yeah, and so, it's, it's like unbelievable for me. The bottom line is that they're just about untouchable. That's that's what it really comes they down are. to. So, but but you know the, the interesting thing for me, Tom. So I write this article. First of all, you know, I I I, I had to make all kinds of changes to make it politically acceptable for seeking alpha. Okay. Because I, I wrote it much more aggressive. Yeah. And then and. I am getting lambasted by people telling me, oh my God, you're saying, you're advocating for closing down and making 200, quarter of a million people lose their jobs. It was tongue in cheek and it was, it was an exam, it was a metaphor. And listen, people it still blows, are so it, politically sensitive. It's ridiculous. No, I, listen, it blows my mind when I see people sticking up for banks anyway. Because the sickest part, folks, is that most of the people that are sticking up for banks are getting taken to the cleaners by banks beyond belief. And sometimes I'm saying to myself, oh my God, don't you re really understand like what they do? Like, you, you know, know, I'll tell you the one thing, I know you're not a fan of Trump, but the one thing that he does says, whenever he talks about the banks, he always has one word for them. He says, they're killers. Well, and, and, and <laughs> you know, and the bottom line is that he knows them upside down because they couldn't take him down because right. they, he, you know, his first, the first time that he would have personally went bankrupt, folks, he was way too big and he knew it and he played that card on them. It was really smart right. because it's like, smart. yeah, I mean, it's totally. Smart this man, listen, he, he's operated, yeah. so, uh, but uh, they are killers. Listen, when they're lending money, they're tying you up 36 ways till Sunday. What's going to happen? More regulation. The problem with the more regulation is no one understands it, and it becomes almost impossible for business to operate. You, you know what is happening, though? I, what is happening, folks, is that 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you're going to see a whole different... Um, structure it's happening right now and some people call it shadow banking that the, the the way it is going there's plenty of money out here right now um you, you know you're looking at, at rates that supposedly are like at zero well rates aren't at zero you and i can't get money at zero right. so what is happening though is that there there'll be more foundations that you can get money just about everywhere. It's just going to depend on what level you are getting money at. And I think, you know, the banking structure in general is going to get eaten away, you know. So, right. Right. you know, we'll see. It, well, they're sowing the seeds of their own destruction. Well, they are. They, they right. are. And, you know, a and lot. And by the way, by the way, the central banks are sowing their seeds of their own destruction, oh, too. Oh, they, they, they're <laughs> scratching their head, man. They, they're, they're, they don't know what to do. Yeah, they, they really they, don't know what to yeah. do. That, and that, and, and that. Tom leads me back to gold, and it tells me that, hey, I, the next uh, 50 bucks, it could be higher, it could be lower. The bottom line is that the next 300 bucks is higher. Yeah, we'll see. You know, it, my take is that this correction's not over. And it's because somehow that, that, that dollar just refuses to go down. We I've, get, never we, seen a more, I've never seen a more bullish environment for precious metal. Yeah, well, I have. But hey, stay stay right there. Andy and, sure. I, Andy and I are coming right back, folks. Dow Industrials right now up 125. You get the Nasdaq up 47. S&Ps are up 15. We're going to be right back, folks. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. 
These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Andy Heck, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and problem with us out here. Don't forget, folks, Andy's got an outstanding show every Tuesday, Thursday, 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. Get it right on your cell phone, tfnn.com. Hit Tiger TV. You know, and we're talking, we're talking Wells Fargo, Andy. What's well, going to be uh, pretty cool here, um, just to see how this shakes out. You know, I, I, you can see in the Tigers then that a, a couple of the Tigers are talking about you can't walk into a bank, folks, any bank, without them trying to cross sell you. And oh my God. There, there's no doubt. So it's going to be intriguing to see if any other bank uh, banks come up and have the same type of problems. You know what I mean? Well, I mean that the high, you know, high pressure said they, they put a lot of pressure on their employees. <laughs> You know, I think that the saying at Wells Fargo is eight is great. And that was open eight new accounts each day. Really? One an hour. Holy cow. Yeah. Man, they were under a lot of pressure. No question. And, you know, minimum wage people, they're afraid they're going to, you know, a very low paid uh, uh, people I in know. the banks. No, I'm with they're, you. They're, 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 you know, under pressure. They need the jobs. Uh, they're going to do everything they can to keep their jobs. Uh, and and the amazing thing is that this woman who ran consumer banking to me is that she walked off. She decided to retire a hundred and twenty five million. That's intense. That's yeah. intense. That is intense. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Nine figures. Wow. Yeah, not, um, I mean, but that's, you know, listen, it's not that, you know, in these banks at the upper echelons, they protect themselves. Yeah, right. Right, no right, question. Yeah. So, you know, very interesting. We'll see how it all shakes out. I think uh, Stumpf is headed back to Congress next week. He's going to the uh, House of Representatives to get spanked. You think? Uh, you think he'll get canned? Oh, I think they have to. Yeah, I, I think he'll too. step yeah. aside. I mean, yeah. I, I think there's no question. I think that they'll probably replace all of senior management. I, I think that it's way beyond him. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, Buffett. Buffett by not coming out and saying that he's behind him yet. Uh, that's that's basically well, saying, he, hey, stop, he also, how long is it going to take for you to, to to leave? And Buffett come out and said he's not going to say anything to November. It's like, oh, really? You know, so yeah, go you know run what? Buffett, and hide. Buffett, 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 lo Buffett loves one person. You know who that is? Yeah, Buffett. Yeah, Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> we know that one. Oh, man. We know that one. Hey, I mean, listen, and he said before, hey, his, his favorite saying is, you, you're going to lose money for me? Okay. You're going to lose reputation for me? I'll be ruthless. Right. And that's from the Solomon Brothers deal. Yeah, right? That is, yeah. that is. I got that letter somewhere in my file. No, I, I saw it. And that, that's that's from a long time ago, folks. Uh, yeah, 1991. And what, yeah, and that's what's so unusual about him being quiet right now. You know. Hey, did you see? Now you know we talk about banks, folks. Okay, that's something that kind of slipped by that wasn't um, a lot of press just yet. But I suspect in the future we're going to see it uh, because this is really unusual. That Buffett's main guy, they just put on the board of J.P. Morgan Chase. They, oh, really? They, Which guy? Agit? They, uh, they uh, added, they added a, uh, so check this out. It gets, it gets heavier than this, folks, because what they did is that, let me get the guy's name, because J.P. Morgan, what they did, they actually added a seat for this guy. 
Wow. Uh, Combs, thanks, man. Isn't it? I mean, this is this is a first too, by the way. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, isn't that a trip? Now that happened yesterday or the day before. And I was like, wow, this came out of nowhere. Um, you know, so it's like, okay, what's that all about? You know, so well, he's establishing a pit. Maybe he's uh, selling uh, WFC and buying JPM. Yeah, and maybe you know? he has been. Oh yeah, because of course he he knows this thing's been going on. This investigation. Oh, he knows for a long on. time. By yeah. the way, is that insider trading? Yeah, probably. Right. <laughs> that that, okay. that that is interesting though. Wow. That's a rhetorical question. I know that. I know that. I know that. <laughs> he's but... he's uh you know listen this man this man has made a lot of money. He's very smart. He's a very good stock picker, but he makes the most money from knowing more than you and me and right. everyone else. Right. And, and that's that, and, and, and what happens there, folks? Is that's knowing the playing field, right? And it's so right. big. So and big. That's it, why, and yeah. that's why the senators can call him up and say, "Hey, Warren, how would you like the DOJ on your tail?" Yeah, right. Clean this up. Wow. <laughs> right. They can do it in a minute. Yeah. They can know. do it in a minute. Robert Rubin did it. Robin Rubin did it. Uh, leaned on Buffett when uh, Solomon was long a lot of silver. Really. And he got a, got Solomon to sell all that silver out. Because uh, the Treasury Secretary leaned on him, and see that that was I mean, and and Rubin himself was a big trader out of Goldman, right? Before right. that, prior to uh, that, Rubin yeah. was uh, the head head. Listen, Rubin and uh, the other guy Paulson, and all of these guys come out of Goldman. Even Gary Gensler, by the way, Hillary Clinton probably one her Treasury Secretary or, or the guy who was the head of the CFTC under Obama. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, and he just uh, left there uh, to work with Hillary Clinton because he'll probably get a big cabinet position. Okay. It's Gary Gensler. Okay, interesting. Goldman. Wow. Goldman Sachs, the training ground for uh, uh, the the U.S. cabinet. So Monday night, so I got I got to go to that that favorite chocolate store I told you about and get the out of that popcorn so I can get it out to Las Vegas for you for Monday night. You and oh, your it's beautiful good. I, wife. I'm, I'm very excited for Monday night. I got to tell you, I think it's going to be very entertaining. I think. That there's going to be a lot of surprises. I think, I, and I think that, um, by the way, I think the election will be won in these debates. I, yeah, I think it very well could enough, be. Yeah. I think that the debates will win the election. I think that you'll see the polls all over the place, but the, the debate performance is, you know, you're going to have 150 million people watching yeah, this thing. Yeah, I know, I know. And minds can be changed as the result of a debate going to be it's going to be fascinating and the markets are going to move because if it <laughs> seems like trump is going to start you know coming up i you know i think that the dollar is going to get very very volatile here yeah i i listen whatever's happening so to what do you think trump trump let's say trump goes ahead in the polls bullish or bearish for the dollar um I, it looks to me that no matter what happens it's bullish for the dollar Okay. Now, if I, if I, it, because it, it just, uh, the, the doll has not taken down any swing points, uh, broken any swing points on the lower level. And I, I would say that the polls are going back and forth, depending on what week it is. You know, it's like, you know, Hillary seemed to be way ahead a month ago, but now I think it's a toss up, man. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, the dollar, the, if I look at the dollar index, to me, it's like, it's so, it's kind of like, Hey, 97 is resistance, 92 is support. Where are we? We're at 95. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. It's like, all right, what do we do next? And if I go way back, if I go way back to like uh, the last uh, 20 years, we're at the midpoint of that range too. So no, we're no kind of in no man's land. Yeah. No man's land, but we're going somewhere, all of us. It's a beautiful We're always thing. going somewhere, right? I like hey, it. Hey, by the way, I wanted to mention copper also. Yeah. Copper had a nice move. I mean, the Fed helped it out yesterday, certainly. But copper took a peak above twenty, uh, $2.20 a pound today. I, 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 we talked about it down at 208. It was the buy zone. I would say scale up 220 to 230, taking profits. So right here today, folks, 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. Remember, no matter where you are in the whole country right now, listening on your car radio, you can get us right on your cell phone, tfnn.com. Andy's going to be coming up. Great show. You can also check his newsletter out. It's the Technomental Commodity Report. 
And just remember something, folks. Inside the commodity market, you have all ETFs and ETNs. You can trade those. You can trade the equity market uh, as Andy looks at all these different commodities. Well, listen, man, you have a great one, a safe one, and uh, I got to make sure that I hit that store on the way home tonight so I can get that popcorn out to you. Thank you so much, Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Talk man. To you soon. Have Take a great care. one. You too. You stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Uh, Dow right now uh, is up 107. Nasdaq's up 46. S&Ps are up 14. We're going to be right back, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow right now is up 103. You get the Nasdaq up 45. S&Ps are up 13. So when you look at those indices, folks, what you have is this. Uh, it looks like coming into the close, uh, the Dow is going to fail on price, on volume, at the gap down uh, that was established out here on the 6th. Uh, SPY looks like it's going to stay above it. Right now, uh, you're 23 cents above it. Uh, the IWM, let's go take a look at the IWM. The small cap is way above it. So the small cap uh, wants to break topside, too. This, uh, small cap right now, we're at uh, 125.75, and it is over the highs. You know, so uh, thus far, you have the NDX over the highs, the composite over the highs, and uh, small cap. But let me say, actually, the, yeah, the Russell must be over the highs if the IWM is over the highs. Um, the Russell's over the highs. So let's see. Yeah, well, the Russell's over, yeah, the Russell's over the high. Uh, by two points. 
So this is going to be intriguing coming into uh, Friday uh, tomorrow. Uh, um, and it, 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 it's this dollar. You know, the, the, the dollar, you know, the market had every right today uh, to bring the SPY up with it, to bring the Dow, and it couldn't do it thus far. So we'll see how this shakes out tomorrow. Uh, what we will have, uh, if you, um, you only have to back down slightly, and what you're going to have, uh, you're going to have a lower, high, lower uh, volume week also. And uh, what that sets up here, I'll put the SPY up so you can see how this sets up, because this on a weekly basis would still be an ABC down, which is pretty amazing. Um, let's see, if we put this up, what you're going to see, let's see. So first I'll do the diamonds, because the diamonds are the failure at this point. Put this up, we'll put it on a weekly. And what you're going to see is, uh, you know, you get that high volume spike from last week. And uh, this week uh, it's anemic. And it's anemic uh, going into, uh, let's see, 14 million. You're going with 11 million to 14. So thus far, it's still going to be lighter than the way that we actually came down. And we're not I'm not talking, I'm not bringing the highest volume level on the way down. If we take a look at the SPY and we put this up, um, same type of setup. The SPY uh, up 326 million. You're going into uh, 428. So the SPY could do it if we do 100 million tomorrow. But thus far, the SPY has only done uh, 66 million. Uh, the dollar is going to be the kicker. Let's go over to the yen quickly because the the correlation inside the yen and the dollar um, is the is the number here. So what the yen have, has done is that that rejected lower price today. We got to 100.32. That's 100 yen to one U.S. dollar. You're at 100.79. And uh, if in fact that yen gets uh, weaker against the dollar uh, tonight, it's going to be uh, some action because last night uh, the Japanese markets were closed. The Nikkei was closed, and I'm not sure. I th I believe that they're opened, let's see, what day is today? So this would be Friday in Japan. I believe that they're opened uh, today. I think that was just a one-day holiday. Um, Volume-wise out here, this is what you have uh, on the, the follow-through. You uh, you're going to be doing about $800 million on the NYSE. Right now you're at 641. Inside the NASDAQ composite, we are at... 1.7 billion, so it'll, that'll bang in about 1.9 billion shares. That's how this is going to be shaken out. And, um, you know, the, the metals market, uh, what is intriguing here is that the, the gold and silver equities couldn't hold price. The metals price, however, is up there. I mean, uh, the, the bottom line, the metals has held. Has held. Um, that being said, it, it looks to me like uh, this correction is not over yet. So. Uh, you know, thus far, if you look at a, a couple of these equities, they're down about 38 um, percent. But I suspect we're going to have uh, a little bit more than that. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back with uh, some numbers for you. Dow Industrials up 108, Nasdaq up 45, S&P's up 13 and a half. We're going to break back. <laughs> following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to Mike in Wilmington. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tommy. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, man. I'm good. I'm calling to give you a compliment because I just want your listeners to know that you are on your game right now. I've been listening to you for a lot of years, Tom. And you are on your game. And I'll tell you, I'll never forget you calling King Dollar back when it was in the 70s. You saying it was going here and everybody couldn't even believe that it could even dream that it was ever going to go back to the 90s. I appreciate the feedback, man. All right, pal. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. And it's the first day of fall, folks. 1021 today. 
Thanks to one of our tigers in the den, he was reminding us that summer's over and fall's gonna begin. Be impeccable with your words. Seek to know the truth. When you hear an opinion and believe it, you make an agreement and it becomes part of your belief system. The only thing that can break this agreement is to make a new one based on truth. Only the truth has the power to set you free. That's a fact. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 98, NASDAQ up 44, S&P's up 12, gold contract up $9.80 trading at 1,341 an ounce. Silver up 23 cents at $20 an ounce. Platinum up four bucks at 1,055 an ounce. Copper up three and a half pennies at 2.19 a pound. Light sweet crude up 77 cents, 46 dollars and 12 cents a barrel. Notes up 10 ticks, 130.29. Bonds up a full point, five ticks, 167.24. King dollar. King dollar down 330 ticks, 95.33. King dollar, folks, rejected lower price once again. It had been down over 600 ticks. Didn't get into a lower swing point. Rejected it, has lighter volume. Bottom line, coming into a Friday, um, well, coming into any day, King dollar right now wants higher price. Coming into a Friday, I expect you're going to see the volatility to continue in this marketplace. Euro, the euro is at $1.12 and the yen is at 100.79. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You have the SPY up at all 36. You're trading at 217.18, and you're right into the gap. Uh, the gap that we're talking about, folks, is the gap uh, from September 9th. That's where it gapped down. It had gapped down with 220 million shares. So bottom line is you're at these highs once again, but guess what? You have no buyers in the SPY. Um, you know, we'll see where this shakes out tomorrow. You get a close under $217.03. That would be a failure on price and volume once again. We go take a look at the Dow Industrials. What do you have in the Dow Industrials? Dow Industrials did fail on price and volume. Now, this is going to, this is, we get some divergence out here, which is pretty intense. Uh, the Dow reached a high out here today of 18,449. We closed at 18,000. Uh, 392, the bottom line is that the Dow had to finish over 18,404. That's where the downdraft occurred. Um, no action in the Dow. NDX 100 and the composite as well as the Russell 2000 are at new highs. Um, the composite was up 44 bucks, 5,339. Bottom line, that's saying, hey, you can go higher. You know, you're, you're, and you're also away from the consolidation that took place here. Um, they consolidated 52.87. So now, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a good, what, 39.49, uh, 53 points away from it. That's, that's, a good, that's a good number away from it. So we'll see how this shakes out, but that can go higher. Qs, same type of setup in the Qs. The Qs have done 22 million shares. That, they are also away from it. Right now we're at $119.09. Uh, 118.32 uh, 118, was the number. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Different animal with gold now. Gold also has a failure out here. So the gold market, if we bring this all the way back to Brexit, what we have is this. Brexit, gold goes topside, equities go topside, all of the above. And most of them had topped out folks in May and June. And that was, that was the acceleration. You know, the top of the actual physical market was on July 6th. Since then, what you've had is this, is that you, the, you came off those highs on the 6th and you had some volume. You come off those highs again on the, eight, on the 5th of October, I mean, August, and you had volume. When we went up, the first time that we had a major failure in the metal market, in the physical metal market, was August 26th. What happened August 26th is that we get to $1,346. As we get up there, we close at $1,325. It's like, oh, really? You, you know, we gave up 20 bucks. That level there is crucial to wrap your head around. The reason being is that we got back up to that again on the 6th of September. And guess what? Sells off again. Today would end up, well, yesterday would end up happening. We have wide price spread. You get the volume behind the move. Had every right to go after the swing point today. Couldn't handle it. It gets to a price point of 1347. 
closes out at 1341. And what does that set up? That sets up a, um, a run back down. So we're going to see how this shakes out tomorrow morning because this is a big number coming into a Friday. Inside that correlation, meaning the direct correlation, would be gold and the U.S. dollar. So dollar, what does the dollar do? Yesterday, the dollar gets to a higher high with volume, breaks a swing point. When you break a swing point, whether it's a higher high or you break a swing point at a lower low with volume and you, and you fail on price, which that's what we did. That would mean that yesterday you got to a higher high, you had volume, and then it gave it up on price. When that happens, most times you go right back to that level. That's what I expect you're going to see in the dollar once again. Why? Because the dollar got down to a price point today of 94.95, rejected that level, and moved up another 400 ticks from that level with light of volume. So you're coming into a Friday. The contract itself was coming into 200, uh, 29,000 contracts. You did 24,000. We have highs yesterday of 29,000. This thing's going to go right after it. You break it. That's in. Good old King Dollar once again wants to get up this $97 level. The 30-year bond, what do we have with the 30-year bond? 30-year bond looks to me like we still have an ABC structure on the way down. We're up a full point today in six ticks. You're at $127.67. You get volume dying on the vine again. We did 227,000 contracts versus uh, 334. So, and even in that context, you know, this is a, this is a very large A to B structure. You know, so we'll see where that shakes out. Silver, here's, here's divergence, because silver is holding price. Uh, silver contract up here, uh, hanging right at its highs. The last, the last swing high, that is. Last swing high in silver is uh, $20.22. Uh, and, uh, and we went and made 2014. That being said, the actual gold and silver equities, they just can't handle it. Uh, yeah, the XAU get to a price point today of... Uh, 101.76, it closed at 98.78. And the ironic part about this, folks, is that it looks to me um, that the gold and silver equities not only you know, brought the, the, that part of the market down, that was putting pressure on the S&Ps, which is pretty wild. You stay right there, folks, we'll come right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. 
Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we had the uh, Dow finish uh, up, uh, up 98. NASDAQ was up 44. S&Ps are up 12. As we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the second hour, we have our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. You can get them right on your cell phone. Go to tfnn.com, hit Tiger TV. Basil also has a great newsletter, the opening call. You can test drive this. 30 days, absolutely free. The way you get it, go to TFNN, go to newsletters, go to trading newsletters. You see the opening call, a test drive at 30 days, absolutely free. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Happy fall. It's fall. Uh, you would not believe it. It is the last few days, summer. It couldn't have been. It's just the most beautiful weather you could ever imagine. Oh, that's beautiful. Because when it's beautiful up in New England, man, it's really beautiful. It yeah. is. And uh, it'll come to an end, but uh, we've had an extended summer, and that's really good. That's awesome. So, market wise, what are we going to look at, Basil? So, uh, if you remember, we were talking about that for my subscribers to my opening call. We had gone short the Dow. Um, the day before the all-time high because it had made a peak D in the Chapman wave. We looked for four higher peaks, and okay. that's where we start to make decisions. And we've held that all the way. We actually had a couple of positions. We covered uh, one set before. And then yesterday, we, uh, when the Fed came out with the news, um, my thinking was that if they said anything about uh, raising the rates and following through definitively, then we probably would have had a dip, and, and I would say, and I've typed in from this for my newsletters coming out for tomorrow, where I say, without Fed's help, Dow trades here. That would have been at about the 18,000 to 17,900 area. Okay. So it gave the market a boost. The question that we have to ask ourselves is, it's been really simple since 2009. Of course, you can look back and say really simple, but the simplicity is lower yields, higher stocks. I mean, that's just basically what's happened. Sure. So now the big question, and, and I'll read to you my, my report that I've got for tomorrow for subscribers. This is just one of the one of the sections that I always do, and that's the daily chart. And it says, has the Fed changed the course of the market or just the discourse? In other words, are they just, uh, they know what they're going to do, but they want to, I mean, it's political season. I don't want to imply not for a minute that the Fed is politically motivated, but it's just a little interesting that they said we've met all our criteria, but we've decided to hold off for now, right? So they're not doing anything. Yes. They've suggested that they could. And at this point, I'll continue, at this point, the light green downtrend line is the key, and that's this dashed line here. And that just shows you that we stopped at 18,449 in the Dow today. It's in leg C. Normally, when I get leg C, I'm expecting also to go to that fourth high. And now you've got the stochastic <clears throat> rallying quite sharply. So that's a good sign. And you've got the MACD, the moving average convergence, improving and just about to cross. Well, it's just cross positive today. So my thinking here is <clears throat> that... Um, the, I had an arch formation, and the arch came actually down here, but there's no choice. I've extended it out just to show that there is still a series of, so far, lower highs and lower lows. We've just for the moment started a, a series of very short-term higher highs, but the quicker that you go in the Chapman wave to a peak A, then a peak B, a higher high, and then a higher peak C, 
and then at peak D, the quicker you're going to have some kind of a sharp pullback. So everything here fits the scenario. And, and um, if you look at the IWM and if you look at the Qs, I'd mentioned both on my show yesterday, uh, the Tiger Technicians Hour, in my, in my report to my subscribers, I showed the NASDAQ, the NQs, the futures, had already made a leg uh, B, which looked like it wanted to make a C in the daily. And that really recycles. There's no other way I could count it. So now it's, for me, it's going to be fairly simple. What we did is I didn't want to uh, uh, reverse my trend. I could have actually done that yesterday when the Fed made the announcement because I had an update to 215, 230. Uh, I could have switched. I just didn't because I, I wanted to see what happened by day's end. Well, the buying came in. So today I didn't want to go long the Dow because now so, the risk. Well, let me ask, so, so when you say reverse, I mean. The I, from the short term, we were short. Okay, so, so, so. That would have mean I would have switched to the long side after the Fed made their announcement yesterday. Instead, I held off. Okay, I, I guess my question would be, the NASDAQ and, and the Russells are, are at highs, but the, right. the Dow... So, so I'll show you right now okay. what, what the scenario is. If the Dow, say I'm expecting a narrow close tomorrow, kind of a mixed market, okay. maybe there'll be a peak C, maybe not. If yeah. there is a peak C, now we've got everything in line and now it can go straight to the other charts. If you look at the IWM, and you were just discussing it, but I'll discuss it in terms of the Chapman wave. So now we've got an alternate count, but everything about it looks like this should be called a leg C to the upside and an E in the weekly chart. If you look at the QQQ, that's the NASDAQ trading vehicle. Yes. And that's the power shares. Same thing. We broke resistance and we went to leg C. If you look at the SMHs, that is the semiconductor, we're in leg C. Everything is fitting to say that... Um, at least for the very short term, and it has to be going in, I need at least two days because to get to a D, if there's no new high tomorrow, that makes peak C, and leaves one leg up, and then we get to D, and that's where we're going to start making decisions. But in the meantime, once again, I'm going to go back to the theme. If the Fed keeps the interest rate low and bonds rally making yields pull back, then do you want to fight the tape? And I'm just saying, I'm going to be very cautious going short. The index is right at this moment. I want to see the evidence, and I'm going to wait until next week because that's when I'm expecting that we will get the Ds in all the, all the indices that I'm missing. And the semiconductor, actually, is hard to believe, but that's been leading on the way up. And I include Intel and some of the others that have been very strong. So I, I don't want to get in the way yet. I, I, I covered it. We covered the short. We made some money there. I don't want to do anything. I'm just... Individual stocks, I'm, I'm also looking at individual stocks, and the one that I had spoken to you about before, we are still holding, and it's so interesting that when a stock that's been an absolute darling of Wall Street, like Ulta Salon Cosmetic and Fragrance, Fragrances, um, Ulta is the symbol U-L-T-A, um, when it goes from a high of 278.63 and then plunges down to the 230s, it closed at 238 today, and we've been short from 270.11. If it doesn't even have that kind of strength to be able to hold a rally after that kind of a beating, something's wrong with this stock. And, and when I look at it and I say, hey, that's, this, is the, this is cosmetic and fragrances, they're usually the last ones in a cycle to, to turn down. It just makes me say, hey, I... I there's certain areas that I want to be a little bit cautious in, and uh, so we've got select areas that we're looking at. On the long side, we still hold our AT&T from uh, December, bought at 34, and I, I, I'm not sure where it's trading right now. Trading 41.11, had a very strong day today, and that's a dividend stock as well. So it's very select. We're going into some smaller, uh, low price stocks, which I think are playing catch up. And I'm just, uh, I must say, I was, I was surprised at the wording, not necessarily the action of the market so much yesterday, but the actual wording of the Fed to, to say that we've got just about everything we're looking for, but we're waiting. Yeah. Uh, that just says to me, maybe uh, November the 9th, the day after the election, they'll turn around and say, oh, yeah, by the way, we're raising rates. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, it looks to me that that was, that was definitely some kind of a political motivation. And if you look at the TLT, had a very strong, this is the Lehman 20-year T-bond fund, had a very strong session. But when you uh, look at it from where it's been, I've still got it in the sell mode in the weekly chart, not the monthly. Monthly still looks good. So this is going to be a fascinating week coming up. So, folks, you can come over to our website at TFNN. You can test drive Basil's newsletter, the opening call, 30 days absolutely free. You go to newsletters, trading newsletters, 
Uh, and of course, you can listen to them every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Basley, have a great night, safe night. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, John. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Focus Commodity CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to six equally weighted commodities, including gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, and sugar, and one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 50% per component, you could earn up to a 50% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The October 13th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So hurry over to everbank.com TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com TFNN. This Advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. It's 2016, and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern Time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com welcome back folks we had the uh, dow finish up uh, in 98 nasdaq was up 44 s p's are up about 12 uh we take a look at uh, inside the uh, dow industrials uh, so inside the dow folks uh you had 28 of the dow stocks uh, in the positive Two were in the negative. Now, that being said, the Dow failed. Uh, it's really intriguing watching this, the whole thing shake out because when you look at some of these large Dow stocks, they're still in trouble. Uh, so I suspect tomorrow is going to be a big day. If we take a look at GE, bottom line, GE is down at uh, 30 bucks. Um, still going after this uh, swing low um, that was established in June. You know, the high, it's down from uh, 33. You take a look at uh, United Technologies. United Technologies is a dog also. It's down at 103 uh, from the $100 area. So uh, this is going to be intriguing uh, in the aspect of that, uh, you know, the, the Dow. Granted, it's only 30 stocks, but guess what? The, the market cap of those 30 stocks are quite large. So uh, someone's selling them, and they're selling them on a continual basis. And in fact, if you look at 3M, they sold 3M right at the high today, which is pretty wild. Uh, 3M um, was trading at 181.66. The high it was going after was 182.27. And guess what? Someone's up there selling selling the heck out of it. Um, so this is a heads up coming into Friday, that's for sure. Uh, Inside the NDX 100, uh, bottom line is that uh, the strength versus the weakness uh, we had. This is.
So uh, your strength out here inside the NDX 100 today uh, was uh, Liberty Financial uh, QVC was up uh, 5%. You had Discovery Communication up 4.8. Um, and we had uh, Insight uh, Corporation up 2.9. Taken away from it, um, very small numbers. Uh, AMAT was down 9 tenths of 1%. Vodafone was off uh, 8 tenths. You had CA Technologies off uh, 7 tenths. And LAM Research was off uh, 6 tenths. We go over to the monster uh, Amazon. And we have with Amazon, folks. <laughs> it's going to be wild watching. Is this the next leg up in Amazon? And Amazon, by the way, uh, has had volume. It was pushing with volume, too. If you want to see something, when they start pushing highs with volume, Amazon has it all over it. Um, going back uh, to the 16th of September, you're going to see the volume come in. Bottom line, it takes out uh, highs today. Let's go put this on a weekly. Yeah, on a weekly, this is just a way. This is an amazing run. So on a weekly... Let's see, 12.4 million. Yeah, Amazon can do a small ABC up. This is going to be a bizarre. Okay, so check. This is intense. Okay, so your A point on this would be 682. Your B would be 790. Buck. All right, say six. So that's approximately a buck 18. No, one second. 790. 680, okay, uh, $1.08, 108 would get you uh, 766, 866, like 870. You're at 804, it was up 14 bucks today. Uh, Google, let's go over and take a look at Google. Google also is going to go for its highs. Yeah, Google's up $10.99. The high out there is $789.75. The IBB, now the IBB, a uh, little different animal out here. Um, it's right at its highs. Uh, the high, actually, it made, well, it made a new high um, from the last six months. It hit $300.08. It was $299.25. We'll see whether it can hang over that tomorrow because that is the level that it's been sold at for going all the way back to, uh, looks like January of this year. Uh, so we'll see uh, if, it, in fact, it can hold. On a weekly basis thus far, we've done 6.5 million versus that uh, 10.3 million at the $299.48. Uh, some of the uh, X, let's go to the XLF, the banking structure. Uh, banking structure couldn't hold price today. Uh, so banking structure uh, got to a price point of $19.56, closed at $19.48. Uh, the high out there that we're shooting for is up, uh, up at $20. The energy sector, uh, XLE, XLE also couldn't hold price. Uh, XLE out here uh, trading to a high today of $69.46, end up closing out at $68.55. The, the bizarre thing that happened out here today um, is that if we go over to the, I'm going to go into the S&P futures for a second. So if you look at the futures, folks, it's not that the futures you know, didn't get to higher price. They certainly did. They were, they were up 12 bucks. And intraday, they were only up 14. The bizarre part about it was the aspect that each and every time that the only soft space inside the market today happened to be the gold and silver equities. And this started at about 10.30 this morning. And that was with gold was still up $14. And yesterday it was up over, you know, $20. What was intriguing about it is that as that started coming down, that started putting selling pressure in the Dow Industrials. It's like, okay, how does this work? Correlation-wise, though, what was going on, at that point, the dollar had not moved. And within about two hours, here, I'll bring up the dollar so you can see when it actually stopped moving, meaning start rejecting lower price. And it's like, so the dollar... Yeah, you know, I guess it did. The, the dollar made its low at, at 10 o'clock, I guess. So, so it did. As the dollar was creeping up all day long, the first place that it hit was the gold and silver equities. The next place that it started putting pressure on was the large caps inside the Dow Industrials. Um, so we'll see where this shakes out. But, you know, the, the way the dollar is trading right now, this dollar wants to go up to the high of yesterday. And the high of yesterday is, is quite, a, quite a move. 
And uh, we'll see uh, coming into this uh, Friday uh, if, in fact, it gives it any pressure. Because calendar-wise, um, you know, you're going to come into, let me look at this calendar for one second. So calendar-wise, where are we going? Let's see. So calendar-wise, we're, you get about another, well, Monday we get the, <laughs> Monday we get the debate, which is going to keep volatility. We're going to have a, a high, we're going to have a big week of high volatility. That's the way this is shaking out. Because we, we do have window dressing would start again, like next Thursday or Friday. Let me see this for a second. Yeah, window dressing is going to start next Thursday. Um, so from now to Thursday, bottom line, you can expect the volatility to continue in this marketplace. And it's, I suspect it's going to be pretty intense. Um, it'll be intense coming into Monday. Uh, the, uh, and what, what, you, what, what is really cool is this, is that what you'll be able to see is this. You'll be able to see the aspect of um, how... Uh, Japan and Asia reacts because that's going to be in real time. That's, that's going to be in real time. You know. um, a few different times I've brought up in the year that uh, if you are in the metals market, you want, you want to go over to Johannesburg Exchange um, prior to our opening. And this morning was, was a classic. And what the classic was uh, inside that exchange this morning is that Goldfields and Harmony had already given it up. You know, Goldfields had got to a price point of a 7176 rand and it couldn't ha handle price. Harmony, now this, this is before our markets opened. Our Harmony, um, that, uh, that ended up being up, uh, you know, 104, but it had got to a high of 5,053. That also couldn't handle price. So that was really interesting in, in the aspect because it, when our markets opened, it looked like that not only they should handle price, it looked like they should go dramatically higher. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. 
With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, you, you're going to love this story. You know, you know what's so bizarre about this? That, that we... Uh, the amount of information, uh, folks, that we have out here on sites, uh, whatever you put on a site, you get to figure that someone's going to get into it. Um, it's really intriguing uh, how this one works. So check this out. So the headline reads, Yahoo says at least 500 million accounts um, breached in an attack. Now, I saw when I saw this, I said, oh, this is interesting, right? I wasn't expecting to read the next line, and this is what the next line says. Yahoo said that personal information of at least 500 million users was stolen in an attack on its accounts in 2014, two years ago. Okay, so it take two years for them to come out. And the reason that they have to have it come out, folks, uh, exposing here, so I'll get, read the next sentence, exposing a wide swath of roughly 1 billion users ahead of the Verizon communication planned acquisition of the web's portal assets. So evidently, um, you know, let me read the rest of it. It's evident they had to come out and disclose this because Verizon is buying them. Pretty intense. The attacker was a state-sponsored actor and stolen information may include names, email addresses, phone numbers, dates of birth, encrypted passwords, and in some case, unencrypted security questions and answers. So they got the whole ball of wax, folks. Yahoo said Thursday in a statement. The continuing investigation doesn't indicate theft of payment card data or bank account information or unprotected passwords, the company said. Affected use, users are being notified, accounts are being secured, and there's no evidence the attacker is still on the network. This is like so bizarre, it's unbelievable. So it is September 21st, 2016, and the Yahoo is telling all of us, don't worry about anything. This happened two years ago. In fact, they're not even saying what date it happened. Uh, Yahoo is working closely with the law enforcement in this matter. The company said in a statement, online intrusion and thefts by state-sponsored actors have been increasing to become common in the technology business. Um, the disclosure of the data theft comes at a particularly sensitive time for Chief Executive uh, Maria, uh, Marissa Meyer as she navigates the company towards a planned $4.8 billion acquisition by Verizon, set to close by early next year. Maya, who has dealt with difficulties and complaints about the Yahoo's email service in the past, needs to keep users, lo needs to keep users logging in to drive traffic and draw the advertising that fuels the company's growth, which has been sluggish. Not, Verizon was notified of the incident within the last two days, the company said in an email statement. So check this out. This gets even crazier, that you buy a company, you're going to buy a company, and... In Yahoo's place, Yahoo put themselves up for auction. The, the auction was won by Verizon. Yet, when all these companies are doing their due diligence for Yahoo, guess what? Yahoo didn't say what's going on. Let me, this is, this is just crazy. This is, this is, this is going to be trouble here. We understand, okay, now here's, here's a, we understand that Yahoo is conducting an active investigation of this matter, but we otherwise have limited information and understanding of the impact, Verizon said in an email. We will evaluate as the investigation continues through the lens of an overall, through the lens of overall Verizon interest, including consumers, customers, and shareholders and related communities. The confirmation uh, that accounts were compromised came almost two months after the company said it was investigating claims that a hacker was offering to sell user account detail stolen in a data breach. The same hacker who had previously stolen data from LinkedIn and MySpace posted information from 200 million Yahoo accounts on the, on the dark web marketplace motherboard reportedly in early August. The stolen information was often was most likely from 2012 motherboard reported citing the hacker who uses the name Peace. All of this compromised information is very useful for criminals in order to hijack users' identities and to use them in a fraudulent process. The thing that's a mind-blower here, 
and that's why they had to come up with this, uh, folks, is that this is, this is a problem. It, it's a huge problem because they put themselves up for auction. They got themselves a, a huge price from Verizon, and they didn't disclose. I mean, you think you want to know if your 500 million of your clients got hacked, um, and you're talking about two years ago. That's, that's, that's corporate America right now. Um, so we'll see where the rest of this shakes out. If we do go look at uh, Verizon, see where this stock is trading right now. Uh, Verizon is at 52.35. And this, this baby's still, uh, you know, these phone companies are still making money. That's the bottom line. If we put this back up, let's put it back up like 25 years. Yeah, we're almost at its highs. Let me put this back. It's 1998. You gotta love it. Okay, so let's. Okay, so the high in Verizon in 2000 was uh, 62 bucks. Right now you're at 52. Pretty wild. And the Verizon had got as low as uh, 21. Ma Bell, if we go take a look at Ma Bell, uh, even though it's definitely a different company, uh, Ma Bell is trading at 41. And if we pull this back, the high in Ma Bell, which was also established in 98, 99, was uh, 59. And that's trading at 41 right now. Uh, we go take a look at Boeing. Uh, go back to the Dow stocks for a second. Uh, Boeing out here today, up a buck 31. You're at 131 dollars and 87 cents. And uh, it doesn't look to me like Boeing's going to get uh, through ice. Uh, that is how the uh, Boeing had come down um, in January. Uh, January had come down from a price point of 140. 1 to 129. Right now you're at 131. It's coming into that area with dramatically lighter volume. Uh, LMT, let's go to Lockheed Martin. Uh, Lockheed Martin is trading, it was traded up $2.80 today. You're at 260. You're at 260. Now this thing's at highs, but this is a yeah, this tested as high, then it came off as high with volume. This, this one's going to be intriguing watching this shake out. Wow, this was a one-way trip. So check this out. Lockheed Martin in 2011 was $74. Goes straight up to 266 and then gives it up. This is going to be a really good one to watch, meaning uh, this came off its highs with monster volume. I mean, someone was selling here in a huge way. Huge way. 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at Deer Company. Uh, Deer right now, this is, uh, you know, Deer had gone topside in a big way um, on the 19th of August. It comes back, it tests that area. Now it seems to be running out of juice. And we go over to Caterpillar. We take a look at Caterpillar. Caterpillar's trading 83.50. And this is going to need more juice, too. You know, your, your Caterpillar has gone from uh, 100, 110 was the high, down to 56, so you, get, you basically got a haircut cut in half. And this baby's just coming up to where it broke down in um, January of uh, 2015. So Walmart, we go take a look at Walmart and see what Walmart's doing. Walmart's uh, seventy-two dollars and twenty-seven cents, and Walmart's doing the same thing. Walmart's, Walmart is over the consolidation that had taken place for eleven years. I mean, Walmart would have to get back inside sixty-three dollars in order to get the lower price. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back, and of course, our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, is going to be coming up uh, from five to six o'clock. No, I mean uh, Andy Heck. Sorry, is going to be coming up five to six o'clock tonight. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information 
information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. Join Andy Hecht as he shows you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, the, the Dow Industrials finished up 98. You had the NASDAQ up 44. S&Ps are up 12. And don't forget, folks, if you'd like to test drive either my daily newsletter, Market Insights, or the Gold Report, you can do that by coming over to our website at TFNN. If you would like to trade, I like to test drive the gold report, you go to newsletters, you go to investment newsletters, you can test drive the gold report 30 days absolutely free. If you'd like to test drive market insights, you go to newsletters, trading newsletters, you can test drive market insights two weeks free. As we uh, come into the market tonight, what you're going to want to watch is the yen and the dollar, folks. Okay, if we go over to the Nikkei, I believe the Nikkei um, is open tonight. They were closed last night. The Nikkei had been up 315 points. Um, as, the, as their central bank uh, turned around. And what their central bank has done, folks, is this. It wasn't that they put more stimulus into the market. They've been putting stimulus into the market for 20 years, and it hasn't helped them. Um, what they've decided to do, it, this is stimulus, and with, with, the, with the, the different correlation is that they are going to uh, target a 10-year bond. And the reason that they're targeting it, the 10-year uh, note, rather, because no, no, 10 years and lower folks are called notes. Over 10 years are called bonds. That's, that's the definition um, between, that's why when I say notes are bonds. So what Japan plans on doing is they're going to target the 10 year. And the reason they're going to target the 10 year, because what has happened in Japan is like the 10 year right now is minus three one hundredths of 1%. If we go to the 30 year, what you're going to see in Japan, you're only at a half a percent. So what they're going to try to do is that they're going to try to make that spread wider, because that's that, that would be called that's flattening the yield, the, the the curve on the yield, and they want to make that wider so that banks will lend. And you know, the the aspect in Japan is that one quarter of their population. Um, is over 20 uh, is over 65 that's that's a huge problem because when you get one quarter of the population that 
basically is retiring. It's a huge problem because you're going to buy less. You're going to do less, all of the above. You know, so we'll see where that uh, does shake out. Uh, and we'll see whether, if in fact, they can uh, get anything going. We go to the Hang Seng and, and Hong Kong. What we have with the Hang Seng in Hong Kong, you know, last night, uh, that got up to the 24,058 and then closed at uh, 23,759. Uh, Our own U.S. dollar and the, the yen, that is what's going to move the, the metals markets out here. You know, I suspect uh, coming into a Friday, we're going to have some movement there. What we did have in the gold contract is that it failed on price and volume. Just barely, but it failed. Now, silver didn't. Silver is at $19.96. It's going after that swing high. And we'll see whether we can make that swing high coming into, the, uh, coming into a Friday. Uh, oil, oil came higher price. However, what oil did is that your volume contracted dramatically. I expect what you're going to see in the oil market also is that you're going to back off, um, off of these prices. Bonds, the ten, our 10-year note and our 30-year bond, that still looks to be set up for an ABC structure on the way down. Um, the, our 10-year right now is trading out at 1.625. In the last three months, the high had, has been 1.727. The low has been 1.358. If we take a look at the last six months, we're right in the middle of the range. Last six months, the high, uh, the high was 1.97, 1.92. Uh, the low was 1.35, and right now at 1.62. Uh, the, on, the, on the yearly basis, we're at the low end of it. You know, the high for the year in the 10 year is 2.344. So bottom line, folks, is that if you are looking to either rate refinance or go buy something, do it now. Because the bottom line is that, yeah, rates can go lower, but guess what? Your probability is that rates are going to go higher. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it. Take ownership of it and fly with it, folks. Thanks for being here. Have a great night, safe night. Look forward to speaking right back here, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Go get them, folks.